Lawrence Krauss is one of today's most recognized theoretical physicists and a hero of atheists everywhere. He taught at prestigious Yale University and later founded Arizona State University's Origins Project, investigating the origins of our universe. That is, until some nasty allegations of sexual misconduct led ASU to remove him from the project in 2018, but we won't get into any of that, though. He now hosts the Origins Podcast and appears on many TV shows, does interviews everywhere, and is a best-selling author. He is surely a face that many recognize in what I describe as the false religion of scientism. Now, anyone who has strong allegiance to their religion will quite naturally oppose any competing religions such as Christianity, for example. Krauss is quoted as saying, Forget Jesus, the stars died so that you could be here today. Again quoting, he feels, Organized religion wielding power over the community is antithetical to the process of what modern democracy should define as liberty. The sooner we are without it, the better. Now, Krauss even goes so far to liken teaching your kids about creation to child abuse. You see, to Krauss, his religion is the only one worthy to be taught. All others, especially Christianity, are dangers to society and little children everywhere. Now, we're not here today to disparage true science. You see, true science is something completely different from the religion of scientism. Let me explain. You see, true science is observable and testable and is simply a means by which we understand the world around us. Scientism, on their, of their hand, is most assuredly a religion, demanding greater blind faith than any other religion on earth. Scientism deals with the unseen and untestable, so the only means of believing its claims are by faith. Scientism builds a mystical world of magic, using the foundation of true science to give it legitimacy, but the two have very little if anything, in common. True science is limited to observations that can be made and tested, while scientism is only limited by the bounds of one's imagination. Ah, but scientism has a monumental problem today. You see, all science now agrees that the universe had a beginning. Now, that is a huge problem for them because they have to explain that beginning. The Big Bang was technically never an explanation of how the universe began. The Big Bang just takes you back to where everything was smaller, but everything was still there, just pressed into an infinitesimally small area. So the obvious question is, where did that stuff come from? Now, science was forced to admit the universe had a beginning. The problem of explaining where the stuff crammed into that little ball came from that sparked the Big Bang needed to be answered. Now, I say it's a huge problem, and it is for true science, because we cannot observe or test the creation of the universe, but for the religion of scientism, they have no problem at all. All they have to do is come up with another untestable theory that explains how something can come from nothing. Enter one of the high priests of scientism today, Lawrence Krauss. Now, since Krauss is probably an atheist, and it's probably not fair to label him a priest, so we will respectfully refer to him going forward as Mystic Larry. Now, there is no mystery too large for Mystic Larry to solve. You see, he has the secret knowledge of the religion of scientism handed down to him from the many oracles and tea leaf readers who came before him. He knows scientism has long departed the realm of true science and the scientific method where everything had to be observable and testable. His followers simply do not demand such things as experimental evidence any longer, but instead use their faith to guide them. Whatever mystic Larry conjures up will be received 
as divine revelation and faithfully accepted and help him sell his book, of course. Now, while on his book tour, Mystic Larry reveals this newfound revelation to the congregation of NPR, where he was invited to preach at the revival and hock his book, of course, titled A Universe from Nothing. Why, there is something rather than nothing. The following are some excerpts from that faith-filled church service. Now first, Larry must address the obvious and dismiss any silly notion that a creator may be involved. When discussing why there is something rather than nothing, he notes, Many people think that very question implies the need for a creator. Now, this sets the congregation on edge, but Krauss quickly dismisses that notion by simply stating it can be shown how a universe full of stuff like the universe we live in could result literally from nothing by natural processes. Now, that's enough for most of the faithful. Just hearing his divinely inspired words of one of the gods of scientism without any proof is enough for them. But he knows there may be some of little faith who may have caught the fatal flaw in his argument. Larry knows he just described how the universe could arise out of natural processes. Not out of nothing. You see, nature is something, processes are something, and therefore natural processes are something. He explained how something could come from something, that something being natural processes. But now is not the time to address such trivialities. So Mystic Larry circles back around through the obvious saying, and again I quote, Life, which appears to be designed here on earth, and, and we don't know the true origin of life, but we think we'll understand it by chemistry. And what we're discovering is that, in fact, physics has suggested that maybe the same is true for the whole universe, that we don't need a creator. Mystic Larry is giving his followers just what they need to reinforce their blind faith. His words... Now it's time to spring the new revelation on to his faithful followers. The doctrine of something from nothing is about to be born, and Krauss lays it out as follows. You take space, get rid of all the particles, all the radiation, and it actually carries energy. And that notion that in fact empty space, once you allow gravity into the game, what seems impossible is possible. That's it, Larry? What about the space? Isn't that something? Krauss answers, and again I'm quoting. But you know, it's more than that because some people would say, I've had this discussion with theologians and others, well, you know, just empty space isn't nothing. You know, there's space. How did the space get there? But the amazing thing is, once you imply, in fact, the quantum mechanics to gravity, then it's possible. In fact, it's implied that space itself can be created where there was nothing before, that literally whole universes can pop out of nothing by the laws of quantum mechanics. The congregation has what they wanted. A few big words and areas of science they don't understand and that are so convoluted that it must be true. Faith in scientism is restored. Mystic Larry has answered the question of how something came from nothing. Now, anyone not following Mystic Larry in blind faith may ask, well, Larry, if you still have space, which is something, and you say you need to add gravitational force, which is something, then you need to sprinkle on the laws of physics, which is something, that would no longer be nothing. Now, he might say, Yeah, that's true, but if we change the definition of nothing to mean just space, gravity, and physics, then you can have something come from nothing. Plus, it sells a heck of a lot of books. Yeah, but Larry, something is not coming from nothing. What you're calling nothing is clearly something. 
Well, then Larry might say, yeah, I see your point, but it really doesn't matter. You see, all I have to do is throw out terms like quantum physics, multiverse, and Higgs boson, and our followers would just block out those obvious contradictions and bow down and worship anyway. It's called faith, silly, and boy, oh boy, our church has plenty of it, thank God. I, I mean indoctrination. Maybe you should cut that last part out. Folks, Larry is what some may describe as a moron. Not a complete moron, however. You see, he knows there will be some of us with enough sense to ask where that space came from. So, he throws in another revelation, which he thinks answers that problem. He says, the laws of physics cause space to magically appear from nothing. But he creates another problem for himself. Where did the laws of physics come from? So here's his great revelation. And this is a direct quote. Even the laws of physics themselves came into being by accident with no purpose, no design. There you have it, folks. How something came from nothing. The laws of physics came into existence by accident before any time, space, or matter. Then the laws of physics created space out of nothing. Never mind that physics deals with matter and energy in their interactions. According to Mystic Larry, the laws of physics happened by accident before any matter or energy existed, just in case matter and energy magically appeared one day. Now, he says the laws of physics happened by accident, but how does anything happen, by accident or not, when there is no time, space, matter, energy, or laws of physics present? It can't. That's not an accident. That's magic. Yes, Mystic Larry just added another chapter to the Sacred Bible of scientism. In the beginning, nothing created the laws of physics by accident. And the laws of physics said, let there be space. And there was space. And nobody saw that it was good because nobody was there. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Folks, let's stop pretending that these esoteric tarot card readers are anything more than the charlatans they are. They have hijacked true science that we can see and test, that we all rely on in almost every aspect of our daily lives, and built on it a false religion that relies on the realm of mysticism and magic. True science exists as the observable and testable means to understand the order created by God. Scientism and its mystics hijacked that truth and use it to argue against God. Mystic Larry is but one in a long line of those that want you to put your faith in men and magic instead of God. Yes, Mystic Larry seems very devoted to his false religion of scientism. The American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, 5th edition, defines religion as the belief in and reverence for a supernatural power or powers regarded as creating and governing the universe. Scientism is precisely that. Their supernatural power is pure magic. Just as a magician pulls a rabbit from an empty hat, they pull the whole universe out of nothing and don't even need a hat. They meet every qualification and more of a religion. They have belief and reverence to folks like Mystic Larry. They believe in a supernatural power called magic, and they regard that power as creating and governing the universe. Now, 
it really does sound fantastic. And if you want to become a member, all you have to do is have faith, blind faith in magic. Now, if you like magic, hit that subscribe button and more great videos like this will magically appear from nowhere when you open that magical portal to the world called YouTube. This is Quest Logos. I'm J. Trevor Atkins. And remember, in the beginning was Logos, not magic.